Hello, my name is Brian and I'm a projectionist at a local theater. This is a short documentation of what it's like to work as a projectionist. There are ups and downs to every job, but I'm pretty sure that I'm probably one of the few people that go to work and come home happy, usually. I start my day as one of the night shift workers. This is slightly abnormal because I'm usually a morning person. Not that I mind the night shift. I actually had a pretty fun day prior to coming into work. It's always work that seems to hang over your head usually. Needless to say, it's not too bad because I get to join co-workers that know how to do their job and know how to have a little bit of fun at the same time. <laughs> Figured I'd document my day as a projectionist. Yeah. <laughs> and it starts out with playing you chess. Project on the chess. <laughs> oh, <that's excellent. laughs> yeah, that is a nice yeah. nice board. We'll have to do Monopoly next. Yeah, I got two boards. I just thought it'd be cool to be able to just like print one out, you know? No. What my friend and coworker Alicia is doing is here is a weekly or chore of breaking down the films and sending them back to Hollywood so, or wherever it is that they go. Movies are brought really to us in aluminum need. cans. Most films consist of four to six circular winded up monstrosities called reels. When built, each film is taped together with a splicing setting. tape. A rather strong settings, tape that binds the like entire movie to together, hours. and that movie is set freely on the platter. Working backwards from building, Alicia prepares the movie to be shipped back by breaking apart the tape at the splicing areas we created them at. Alicia is marking those areas with Q-tips to make it easier to disassemble the film and place it back into their cans for their final return. It's usually an odd happening for many projectionists to be together at once. But it sure is fun when it happens. As projectionists, we have the privilege of being trusted employees. People who don't need a supervisor 24-7. Knowing this, we are honored to do the work that we need to have done. Usually we're always on schedule, and even though we might goof off from time to time, it's well deserved and we try not to go over the deep edge. Which is why it comes time to do what needs to be done. We gladly do it because we know this is a better job than flipping fries and deep frying burgers, or however that works. Consisting of over 15 projection areas and 16 booths for available projectors, our particular theater spans a large area covering two floors of the building. There are plenty places that the average customer never gets to see. This is the largest example of such places. In the past, a projection booth was really that, a tiny booth with a very bored projectionist. Since the 80s, or however long ago that was, things have changed a lot. On a normal day, the morning and closing shift projectionists are left all alone with an entire two floors to themselves. It can get pretty spooky. I have to admit, it does sometimes scare the hell out of me when I think I'm alone and suddenly the mid-shifter and I accidentally run into each other by picking the right hallway. There have been times where both projectionists equally jump when they manage to meet at the right corner of this vast place. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> gotcha! <laughs> As probably expected, a projector is a very complicated machine. Each employee spends at least a week understanding the basics of how to run, maintain, and properly configure the film in the projector. Even our supervisors depend on us because, like a language, projector maintenance and procedure can be forgotten. Every part of the film has to be carefully positioned in the right spot to avoid disaster. Even the slightest misplacement of the film can cause a catastrophic problem that can leave you with a pile of film to clean up and a lot of angry customers. In some cases, films have been lost. I've been told that films may cost up to $3,000 per print. That's almost as much as the average projectionist's car. 
knowing this, we try to do our best to make sure that everything is done flawlessly and perfectly. Right down to checking to make sure that the correct movie is on the platter every time. The loops have to be just right, the placement has to be fine-tuned, and when the film shows up in frame and perfect, you sometimes feel like celebrating. Some projectionists have been known to have competitions to see how many projectors in a row can start perfectly in the frame without fine-tuning. And tonight, the greatest thing in the projectionist world is the fact that usually we have to move around about like 16 different movies on 16 different platters. Today we get lucky because tonight, out of all those movies, we only have to move two. Wait till you see the look on Andre's face when he finds out we're only moving two movies. This rocks! <laughs> I'm going to send some of this to my parents, since they haven't seen me in a while. Like all things that involve the projectionists, this is a very careful procedure. Not in the carrying, but making sure that the clamps are tightly in place before you haphazardly carry them from one side of the building to the other. On average, the film can weigh up to 40 to 50 pounds. Actually, I haven't this weighed it, but it sure does feel yet. like that. Yeah. Just imagine the mess we would be in if we were to accidentally drop one of these things. The process is simple enough to both do and mess up at the same time. The trick is to do all of the former, while making double sure that the latter never happens. So far, it's never happened to me or my friend and my co-worker, Andre. But I've been told that this is one of the things that is destined to happen to every projectionist at least once in their job, where one of the clamps comes loose and the film sprawls out all over the floor. I plan on proving them wrong and making sure that this never happens. Cross your fingers. Good thing is these things don't weigh too much, or at least not these. The larger movies do. Most of the movies are finally out of the It's time to relax. You know for a fact that it's not going to spill out onto the floor once it's safely nested in its own little platter. This is the second movie of the day, and that means that it is time to just sit back, turn the projectors off, and wait till the last one shuts down, and then it's time to go home. And at the end of the night, all we got to do is see which one of these are not running, and which ones are running. These two and that one. Theaters one, four, and seven. Um, we gotta wait for those to quit. Then after that, we just take the ones with the fault light and turn those off. Then when they're all turned off, then we're done for the night and we get to leave. Ha ha ha. Turn them off and just hit the switch. Then after that, we take the sound towers we turn those off, and we open these to make sure these are all open. That way, the next user in the morning, or the next worker, can easily thread the 